Welcome into the show. It is the Democrat Debate Recap. Um, it, here's the thing about these debates. You have a couple, and we get everybody's answers on everything, and then as we keep going, they get asked the same questions. They're asking them the exact same questions. I thought the best question tonight came from Anderson Cooper, who straight up asked Beto, if people don't turn in their guns, how are you going to go door to door uh, to get their guns, basically, was the question. And Beto, Beto, man, uh, you know, it's uh, his answer. We, we fully expect the American people to, to follow the law. That wasn't the question. It's what if they don't? What are you going to do? It, it, Anderson Cooper, to his credit, was clearly trying to get Beto to say, look, if you don't turn in your gun, we are going to send men with guns to get your gun from you. And, uh, and, and Beto refused to say it, of course. Um, and, and it was just, it's really pathetic. That guy is one of the worst, the absolute worst candidates um, that, that you could ever have. He's a straight up authoritarian. And I would be terrified to live somewhere where he is in charge of a damn thing. Uh, and thank God he didn't win in Texas because I'd have to move and I, I don't want to leave Texas. Uh, we'll, we talk a little bit about kind of the Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren performance since they're at the top. I actually thought they both held their ground. I thought Joe did fine. He just has those moments where you can just see how old he is and it's really, really hard to watch. Um, where he's just mumbling and stumbling and then they ask him to stop and and he's still in the middle of sins he's like and and it's it's you just feel oh thank god that they got him to stop because he, he's mumbling he's slurring his words and you can tell how old he is um up there bernie's the one that had the heart attack but man joe biden seems 10 years older than bernie and and borderline senile um but I thought he did okay other than that. I, I thought he attacked when he needed to attack his his kind of sparring session with with Elizabeth Warren. I thought he came out, she looked petty in it, and and, and I thought he looked like he was a fighter and, and, and um, really got the better of her in that exchange where she was like, I respect the Barack Obama administration and sometimes he had to fight against people. Uh, and she was clearly, you know, subtweeting Joe Biden there. Uh, I thought he got the better of that, actually. I thought I thought she looked a little bit petty. Um, I thought it was funny when uh, Biden turned to his right and he goes, talking to Vladimir Putin, and uh, he was kind of pointing at Bernie, but like not purposely, and, and Bernie was like, uh, are you calling me Vladimir Putin? And I, I, don't, I just thought that was funny. I thought that was a nice moment of levity. Um, and then you look at... Elizabeth Warren's performance, I thought it was okay. I saw a lot of people online giving her like an A, which I thought was very odd. I didn't think she did that well. I think that she's very weak when she gets attacked, and I think that's going to be her downfall. I don't think that she can hang with Donald Trump in a, in a, in a head-to-head -head election. He is going to pound her over the head with... Um, uh, the, obviously, the, the Native American stuff. He's going to pound her over the head with socialism. Um, the right-wing media is going to run with with the fact that she has approved all the Trump budgets, and I think that's going to piss off the hardcore left. And also, you have the moderate left that doesn't like her. She's going to be the nominee. I, I think we can all agree on that at this moment. Something might change, but at this moment, it, it's it's... If someone on that stage is going to be the nominee, it's going to be her. So, if we're just looking at, at what is going to happen in that race, I think the moderate Democrats won't like her because even though she says she's a capitalist, everything she stands for is socialist. And I think the hardcore leftists will not like the fact that, one, she's voted for every single Trump and Obama military budget expansion. I think hardcore leftists have a real issue with that. Uh, they're tired of the American empire, um, and, and that is something they can hold over her head. Um, and, and also, she's not Bernie. I think these people want Bernie. They wanted him back four years ago, three years ago, and uh, the, the DNC screwed him, and now they, uh, 
I think they will feel hard done by if Bernie's not the nominee this time, which I think there's a very slim possibility he will be. And I think Elizabeth Warren will wind up losing to Donald Trump because she won't be able to flip those Rust Belt states and uh, and a place like Ohio where the debate was tonight. Uh, I want to talk about Andrew Yang for a second. I, I, I thought Andrew Yang had probably the best performance of anyone, and it's not because he's particularly well-spoken, because he's not. Uh, it's not because he has these great ideas, because he doesn't. It's just because he talks to people in a direct manner. He's very good at that, of saying, here's the problem, um, and and it's not even that he has all the solutions he thinks he does, but it's just the fact that he is bringing a different argument to the table as to what the problem is. The problem is automation. The problem is that all these jobs have left. Here's what I'm going to do about it. Um, uh, I, I just thought he was very direct. I don't think people like being patronized. Uh, maybe some people do, but I, I don't think the majority of people like being patronized and I think people like Elizabeth Warren people like especially Kamala Harris who is the worst panderer in history Cory Booker especially these people are the worst most patronizing people and I think <clears throat> one of the reasons Yang has, has gotten so much support is because he talks to people directly he assumes they can understand uh, you know mildly complex ideas and come to a similar conclusion as him. And I think people appreciate that. Um, also, Tulsi. I was glad Tulsi was back tonight because she is the lone anti-imperialist voice up there. Bernie is as well, but Bernie doesn't really make it his central issue. Uh, so <clears throat> it's hard to say that, that Bernie, without her, would be up there talking about it because that's not really his thing. But she is, and, and I thought she did a great job. I thought the way they treated her, again, you look at this. Elizabeth Warren gets so much extra time to answer her questions, and then she says, um, oh, please, can I finish? Please, can I finish my, my, my answer? And then Tulsi tries to turn around and actually ask a question of Elizabeth Warren which is what this whole thing's supposed to be about. It's a debate. And they're, oh no, we gotta go to commercial, sorry. Elizabeth Warren gets, I'm not even sure. It, it felt like 20 to 30 seconds more to answer her questions than everyone else. It feels like CNN and the New York Times want Elizabeth Warren to be the nominee. She was getting e extensively more time than everyone else to answer their questions, and especially Tulsi. I thought Tulsi was the most hard done by. Um, Tom Steyer was pretty useless. Uh, you know, Julian Castro's out of it. Cory Booker's out of it. Um, but but I, I did feel bad for Tulsi at parts. I thought she was very good at parts. I thought she was very politician-y and boring at parts. So, it, it, you know, a C for her. She could have done better, much, much better. But she failed to. She did attack the media which was nice to see. She texted CNN for calling her a Russian asset that day and the New York Times, both of whom were running this thing, uh, for calling her a Russian asset and a sod apologist and all these things uh, that she has been smeared with in the media. I did like that because I think even moderate Democrats can see uh, how terrible the corporate press is and certainly the far leftists, uh, the hardcore anti-war folks know the dangers um, and the anti-humanity of the corporate press, and, and so that was good to see her do that. Um, other than that, um, I, I thought the most absurd thing I've ever seen in one of these debates was when Anderson Cooper asked Joe Biden, he said, Donald Trump has falsely accused your son of receiving special uh, you know, favors or whatever, or you, you know, y'all having corruption. I can't remember the exact way, but he said falsely accused, and I was like, man, that was like when NBC put out a report saying, uh, you know, uh, Chuck Schumer falsely accused of sexual misconduct. It's like if that were Brett Kavanaugh, if that were anyone else, that wouldn't, that would be the opposite of the headline. Uh, so I think that's very, very fascinating. Uh, just those little things. That's why people, when, talk, when people talk about fake news, it's hard to come up with like big concrete examples. Not hard because there, there, there are quite a few of them. But 
it's those little quips like that that if you could sit down and watch you know the news or cnn something for two hours with them you could point all these little things out but it's hard to come up with off the top of your head but that is the type of thing that we're talking about when we say fake news um anyways that is all i've got for the democrat debate recap make sure to check out my other show today which was uh which was nfl weekend recap uh and on the site today make sure to check that out link is down in the description and uh, it's preview wednesday 12 and uh eight on the year so i'm up about 40 bucks if you're betting 10 on every game join with me let's make some money that's all i got i hope you have a wonderful wonderful wednesday and i will see y'all tomorrow